Hello, Laura. Hello. Yeah, uh, everyone. Uh, so nice. We were just saying um, it has felt a little chaotic uh, with everything that is going on. Uh, the Olympics has added a layer, a layer of chaos. Yes. Uh, that I love and wasn't anticipating, but am really leading into. Only chaos. I, well, I, that's, the, that's the Summer Olympics for you. I mean, I love the Olympics, um, but summer feels like a full-time job. It's just so, <laughs> there is so much going on at any given time, um, plus all the athletes on their social media. Like, you are just, uh, and it is just full-time. And when they are abroad, time, like, really, it's tough. I, I, I do... I tend to like it when they're on the other side of the world um, or have a six hour time difference because I can really get through a lot in the morning. But if you have a busy morning, oh my gosh, you're so behind and your you're phone behind. is just spoiler city. So yes. it's, and then you got to wait for primetime coverage, which NBC is doing a great job. I have to say, yeah. I have to say, mm -hmm. and good job to mm -hmm. the team at the Peacock, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just not the same. So watching live, the stakes are very cool, um, but you got to like, you got to manage it. And it's, it's crazy. So you just never yeah. know. But then on the flip side, uh, there's so much, pardon me to those athletes, but so much random shit that you just had no idea. And you're like, I guess this is what we're doing now. Um, yeah. and I just love it. I love yeah. It. I got really into three on three basketball. It's great. That is great. It's fascinating. So um, I'm less really running. It is. It, it's a lot more strategy. Um, yes. And yeah, you know, and it's having the, I, I assume the desired effect where I'm just like, God, I just want to like play some tennis. Like I want to get outside. I want to like <laughs> go for, I want to like go like walk on a track or something. Like it, it's yeah. very, you're like, you're like, okay, this is some inspiring that. stuff. Yeah. yeah I, could like, do, not I, mean, I couldn't level. do that. Right. Like not let's at be that real. Level okay. We are now kind of those idiots who are sitting on the couch like, well, I could do skulls. No problem. No. Like, we can't no. do skulls. We no. can't. All no. right? But it looks nice to be on the water. I would like to just, like, paddle around on some 100%. water. Kayaking yeah. as a leisurely activity, very fun. <laughs> and kayaking on whitewater rapids, rapids is insane. Um, but you know, I was watching the those BMX the cuties. Slaloms. The, yes. the, the white water rafting where they're, then they have to like paddle around. How? Like I, but I was watching those kids on those BMX bikes doing their, their flips and flops. And I was just like, you know, that's, it's, I couldn't be me. That's, uh, we're 40 now. Like, let's be real. But, um, it is, I'm just like the, it's fun to ride a bike. Like this, that's fun. Like it is real <laughs> fun to be on that bike and that these kids get it um like yeah. for a bike ride biking biking around is fun I it's don't know. very nice yeah it's very joyful uh and it's fun to watch the other people around them be joyful um awesome. though they're not doing as i or maybe i just haven't caught it but do you remember the olympics of our youths uh hmm. laura okay. bob costas would be there telling yes. us the tales Yes. Um, and half of your Olympic experience would just be like crying. Yes. Um, uh, and I feel like there's a little bit less of that though. Last night, what I would, I didn't catch the men's, um, gymnastics live. Mm. Um, but so I was watching the, the, re the primetime coverage and they really went into those Ukrainians. Yeah. Um, uh, and what their like Ukrainian experience was yeah. um oh my god they just showed bob costas they they just rolled him out like are you kidding he, or is he like watching leanne um, oh he's watching he's probably know. in the stadium watching simone biles i, I would like I to know i would like to know uh, um, he's at he's gymnastics, at gymnastics. Oh my he god. would be I he love would be that. good Holy he's shit. earned he's it next to tom cruise <laughs> yeah or snoop honestly <laughs> i feel like they have nice, a lot to talk about similar work similar work yes. done they have the yeah. same doctors what they have <laughs> That is good. I one of the things that I'm loving about the Snoop of it all, uh, which is to say everything. But I mean, truly, he's just at his like grandpa with 
all the access to anything he wants and he's doing it right he is not the grandpa that's going to stay at home and like gotta be home for the five o'clock news like he's like i am soon talking i can go anywhere i'm gonna go anywhere and that is the correct the correct approach to life so yeah great to see him i don't know how like i want i want to i want to be in like a fly on the wall at that nbc olympics meeting where they were like all right guys we need a celebrity that we can just plant and he'll wear like hooky outfits and run around. Um, who do we, who do we pick? And I want to know what that list was and how they ultimately decided that it would be Snoop Dogg. Uh, Cause 20 I mean, years ago, it wasn't going to be Snoop Dogg. Oh no. Like the fact that every single human on the planet knows who Snoop Dogg is. Yeah. Is shocking and brilliant i mean it really shows um the power of hip-hop and r&b and how just like jazz african-american culture is american culture and it is worldwide and he is and i think because of the martha stewart of it all like you're they're just like guess who's excited like who is the person that you're always going to be excited to see and that's going to be snoop dogg everyone's going to be excited oh my god everyone's going to be excited yeah and they are you can see them all flip out yeah he's your cool Um, uncle he's your cool uncle uh who just says like wild shit yeah, and, and he's going to wear that crazy like, shirt cool. with your face on it. And you're like, thank you, Uncle Snoop. That's, <laughs> you, it would be embarrassing, but you're so cool. I got to love it. They rolled him out. I mean, I don't know what kind of hours Mike Trico is putting in. I he does like look tired. I, Mike is carrying the it's load for. Five, Mike. I just, I really, whew, I just hope he's getting some rest. I worry for Mike because uh, he's, he's the best he is the he's best. the best oh my god he's so good and he they had him out it was last night it had to be two in the morning paris time and they're like i'm I, mike Trico was like oh i'm bringing my special guest in and at this point you know the only special guest that there is is going to be snoop dog and i'm like i was just watching snoop at volleyball like three hours ago and then he was on the bus to basketball earlier and snoop rolls in uh with the sun with the glasses sunglasses on like with the stars uh yes with the stars and he's just like mike what's up what's up mike what's up what's going on i have had a day i've I've had had a day day. Also, it's like 100 billion degrees and he's in his full sweatsuit with a shirt reveal and a shirt reveal committed to the fit. I mean, it's just what we want to see. It is what we want to see. And there is something from the Costas era where everything was so serious. Like it was not, there was no, there was occasional humor in the like, oh, here's a funny story in this uh, this profile of this athlete that then is going to turn into a Sabathon. But it used to be yes. so serious. So it is nice to have that, because, uh, I don't know, the... <laughs> Oh man. Uh we've got some real live live wires in the chat here with some Why is real... everybody calling him Nav Acostas? There was rude. a typo. There was a typo, but now it's gonna stick uh because uh, Leanne had a little bit of a typo and um Lisa Weissman now is just what? embracing the name Nav Acostas and I I do not approve. I love Bobby. I do. Nope. Uh, so do I. I love him. They, yeah, he, I works love him. For, uh, he works for he works for MLB TV, uh, and so he's he's like they roll him out once a week to cover one of the games, and you're just like every week you're like, where's Bob gonna be? Where's Bob gonna be? Because uh, he covers a real nice baseball game. I do. Uh, I love him. I like his voice. Yeah. He's got a good timbre. Um, but Mike is yeah. Mike can bring levels. Oh my to god, the I love he does levels. Joyful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Joyful. Well, that's what every putty in the world thinks, except for Yankees fans. So Lisa's saying that he's only a Yankees. That's just not true. Uh, he is actually a Dodgers fan, but you would never know that unless you got real deep into it, which I have. 
which I have. Uh, but yeah, everybody who doesn't funny, like the Yankees I thinks always, that everybody is mm-hmm. for the, everybody else is for the Yankees. This and I always thought he had a soft for. spot for Cleveland, Lisa. So whatever. Uh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? That, see, and she's like, no, he hates the Guardians. Hates the I always Guardian. thought that every person <laughs> thinks that the other person's person hates yep. their own. I team. just always it's thought he was like, guys, but Cleveland. Yes. I always thought that about him, but that's fine, oh Lisa. My God. It's, it's all so right. Funny. That's you so don't have funny. to like knob Costas. I will no, always love him. I also do. Yes, he's um, part of my my lifestyle also. But love also, a I, don't, I, I do not baseball as hard as all of y'all. I just really know him from Olympic coverage. And it was always just like time to hang with Bob every two years. And I loved it. So uh, he's. I'm just glad that he's there enjoying it on the sidelines. That must be really fun for him. I hope. I bet I so. Well, they had to kick him out after he got uh, bad Botox that one year. Remember, Laura? Yes. Yeah. He was saying he had eye disease. Eye disease. Yeah. yeah eye disease. And everyone was like, where's Bob Costas? And they had to like roll in, I don't know, mm-hmm. or somebody. Um, and then Bob, Bob has this eye disease. Oh my God, he has eye cancer. And he just really had bad Botox like right before he was supposed to get on. And that was a huge scandal. Um, that was funny. It was. <laughs> Bob. Poor not an auspicious end no. um no. but that's all right that's all yeah. right but yes it is interesting uh the nbc cavalcade of stars they are attempting to roll out uh to varying degrees of success but uh the athletes uh, seem to be um the real stars as usual and it's really great to see them on social media there was some mention in the chat of the pin trading um that happens at the olympic village and i've been really fascinated with that um and yeah, there are, some of the stars have their own pins. There's like a Katie Ledecky pin that went in and out in like seconds. Oh and my the God, pin. pin. So good. And the Dutch, I have uh, a just a special shout out to the Dutch because they have won the pins with their tiny They're orange okay. clogs. Right? It's so great. It's very That's smart. Awesome. Everyone else's pins are a little meh, snooze fest, um, except man, uh, you were talking about lack of tear jerking stories. Um, someone, all anyone has to do is just mention the Olympic refugee team. And I just cannot, oh whoo, whoo, whoo. Their, their pin is like paper planes shooting into a heart. And I just like, can't even deal with it. I can't even deal with it. You were mentioning those Ukrainian athletes, like guess yes. who I don't miss? Russia. Russian, um, always. They were miss always it. Talk about soul sucking. They made, well, a lot was wrong with the Winter Olympics this last time. A lot was wrong with it. Talk about a joyless experience. It was so joyless. And the Russians had a lot to do with that. Um, okay, and then, the, you know, the Putin's dick. And those uh, right sanctions, before. and they couldn't play under their own flag. And boy, was that a real mur, mur, mur. It's like, Give get them out of here. Get them out of here. They were just like, yeah, the freaking IOC. Uh, I don't miss them. And it's been really interesting to see what the playing field looks like in the meantime, like watching those gymnasts from Brazil have their moment. Oh, um, like yes. watching those Italian ladies like really fuck it up out oh, there. Like it's God. fascinating what it's doing to the field. Um, you know, the it's just, it's really, really interesting. And I you know, hashtag not all Russians, it's, it's their government and not the people, yeah. tra-la-la. But um, it's really interesting to just uh, enjoy the Olympics and not get all hot and bothered about those, that program. It just is so yeah. frustrating. And uh, no well, program and is perfect. That, that, that dope, the doping that happened with the, that little Russian child Yes. Also, yes. Uh, the ice skater last time yep. that also really sucked. Ridiculous. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the whole the whole thing joyless, joyless, mm-hmm. joyless. And so now it's just nice to see Snoop Dogg dancing around. Yep. Um, and everyone having fun. Um, and and Simone looks happy and relaxed. And like, just like yes, just like stepping into that leadership role in just the most graceful way possible. It's incredible. Shout out to USA Women's Rugby. Like oh like my God. all. Woo! There's been so I many tacos. No I. Idea. I had no yeah. idea that that was so fun. I think all sports should have a seven-minute version of that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
it's you just great. go like balls like, out for seven minutes and then you get a little break and then you go balls out for seven more minutes that's brilliant it is fascinating and it is so yeah. cool to see her how much she's been an ambassador for that sport and have it pay off literally and figuratively in this olympics yes. like so cool and it is um it's just great so the other thing that i didn't really realize probably because i wasn't on tiktok as much in 2020 as i am today but like once you're um finished once your your competition is complete you have to be out of the olympic village in 48 hours uh they they kick you out <laughs> so there's a lot of people that are like leaving like my faves are going because their events are wrapping up so some are staying in hotels and they'll be there for the closing yeah i was got, seeing but where some just have to fully go just, like bailed out and they went yeah. to a hotel they didn't want to stay in the village anymore um, right uh, which was funny right. i saw that a coco a coco was saying oh, yeah. that all of the tennis players moved out of the village go. after the opening ceremonies except for rafa nadal and Coco, Coco was like, well, if Rafa's still here, I'm going to stay. <laughs> I mean, listen, he's going to be, it sounds like frugal to me. Like he'll be rich forever. <laughs> he's just like, what are you talking about? It's free. He's like, I'm about to retire. I got to, yeah. I got to use this free, I got to take this, take this free, uh, this free room. Uh, bed, yeah. you know? Whatever. Oh. But yeah, oh, no, it's, you know, but a lot of people's, uh, a lot of countries' programs are not as well-funded as USA, et cetera. So, you know, once they're done, they got to go China's. home. Yeah, stay. Or China's. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. The, the money, the money is crazy. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so that's the other program we don't talk about, but um, it is, uh, they've at least pulled it back a little. Um, at yeah. least they're not so showy about they're their-, on the, their best behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like after they got the big thumbs down after the Winter yep. Olympics, there's like, whoa, we read this yep. incorrectly. Uh, let's yep. maybe tone it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they're they're reining it in a little or being a lot less conspicuous, which at this point yeah. is a far cry from what was happening. So interesting stuff but yes i uh there's a lot of tear jerks uh, to come i feel um and uh there's always moments that irish swimmer um that won the gold for ireland and how much that country is freaking out i just love that i love that crap it's just the best uh the first time that like anyone's heard the irish national anthem like ringing out in the swimming uh stadium i get that good for that little guy a little it nerd he's not, he's just having a day shane was telling me um that there was an irish rugby um, on the men's rugby side there was hmm. an irish rugby player who hurt his finger and uh, like right before his band okay so shane told me the story it's probably 50 percent true but it's, a, <laughs> right. it's enough like the highlights are grading enough. on a curve yeah all right uh so they were like well we need to operate on this finger and you have to miss the match and he was like chop it off and they were like what they're like get rid if i lose the finger will i be able to play the match and they said yeah that's an easy operation and so he they cut his finger off and he played his rugby match <laughs> What's always killed me about rugby is that they call it the sport of gentlemen. Um, they talk about it being a very gentlemanly sport. Um, and uh, do they? they do, which I've never understood because it is crazy. Like it, it's you insane. just, it is the sport of pain. Um, but it does seem to be a rather supportive environment, I suppose, for each for the among the athletes. But like, They're it is just, just beating pure the shit out pain. of each other with yeah. no helmets, no nope. padding. Nope. Um, nope. Uh, you're they're throwing. Uh, it, it's uh, it's violent. It uh, is. It's just a lot of violent. shoving and muck, and you've got to be solid and uh i could actually see a world in which they were like yeah uh momentary pain or like nursing this little sprain along you've got spares get it out of here you know it it's not the here. thumb yeah thumb's important but thumb's get it important. out of here yeah one of these digits we got extras get it out well of here. i wouldn't put yeah. it past them and it, particularly knowing that he's irish Sound, sounds like a lot it makes a lot of sense it's to me kinda, so. right it's very uh to you know to the to the point it's leading into the stereotypes yep. they're like why yeah. are we wasting time here um yeah. this is just the easier way like just give me a shot of jameson and let's get this rolling yep. oh yeah <laughs> 
But yeah, I love that. I love there that. Yeah. is so much, um, like there again in, um, Tokyo, there was these, these brothers that won gold for Ire- for Ireland in rowing and like, they've been replaying their interviews and it really, it's just like you're in someone's FaceTime call home. It's the dullest. Like they're all just like, it's the guy that is like, Oh, sure. How you doing? And they're like, Oh, well, you know, we're, we're still adjusting, but you know, the weather's been, Oh, and they're like, Oh, you've had lovely weather. And like, they're just going on and on. And you're like, this is so dull. And they're like, Oh, but we're sure proud. And they're like, Oh, thanks so much. Wish we were there instead of stuck over here in japan we'd love to be celebrating at home and you're like those videos were the worst let's get your family and then not only not only in in that time uh, were you having to make really awkward zoom calls with your family now you have to watch other people make really awkward zoom calls with their families what is this no wonder they had to call snoop in this time they're like we have a lot to make up for uh, we got to keep the number. It was like everyone was stuck at home and no one was watching this. Like, let's, let's dial it up. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's dial, dial it up. up. Yeah. Let's dial it up. So, uh, well, welcome to Olympics are, live. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I kind of warned everyone. I, we, yeah. we're going to go a, a hard on Olympics. This yes. is culture corner. Just, this is the only thing happening right projects. now. It is sports, sports, sports. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. which means that we have a lot of time to sit on the couch and do some crafting. Yes. Um, in crafting, we have been doing. Laura, do you want to get us kicked off? Yes, of course, I'm mid-row here. But yes, I have started for Party Olympics. I have cast on my Orla vest on July 26th during the opening ceremonies. I got things cast on and I am working my way through the front. It's going great. Um, this is yarn that I brought back from Iceland. It's Lopi. It's Let Lopi. It's the Galaxy colorway. It now, is teal. you it's did like post a picture of this yeah, in the feed I today, did. Laura, and you could see the galaxiness. You actually can. Of it. Yes. Yeah. It's much better in it person. Like a beautiful gray. Yeah. But yeah, it does, which is also fine. But in person, it has a lot more dimension. It's like a teal with magenta spun through it and like pops yeah. of 80s and yellow. It's just beautiful. Um, so it's going to be much more impressive in person, which is great because I we have a lot of in-person opportunities to hang coming yeah, up. So that I've been flying on, which is great. Nice. Um, and so you've been flying on a sweater Olympics, too. Uh, I have, but I'll, you know, my party Olympics project yeah. is not uh, the forefront, uh, is not no. the forefront Fair. of my mind. Um, but this is so beautiful. And every time I, I it pull is. it out of the bottom of my bag, I'm like, you should work on this more. Um, this is it's a so BFF good. sock from uh, PA. Um, it is adorable. This is some yarn that I believe was Karen uh, Yitzin's yarn that she that sounds right. um, did not want anymore. And I just love it. It's going to make such beautiful socks. Um, uh, yeah, super excited about this one. I need my goal for Party Olympics was to finish one sock, um, and it's only day five, uh, so oh, I'm not I'm not stressing about this. I have my 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 focus has been elsewhere. Uh, yeah, um, understandable. Yeah, it has. I have been knitting my framed sweater that is um, so much progress in a week i mean that actually so surprised me yeah. uh it's so yeah. beautiful uh isn't it yes isn't it so oh, yeah. pretty yeah it is I, the best you can see why this has been uh the focus uh, this has been the focus. Yeah. yeah so it's inducing I, rage in the comments with how much people love it. They love it. So I, much. I'm kind of mad about it. Um, so you can't really tell this isn't dark Navy from Stonehenge fiber mills. That's what this dark is. And the yellow yarn was a gift from, um, Kathy Zwatsky. Um, it is beautiful yarn from hand dyed from a wing and a prayer, uh, farm, um, near where she lives in the, in the Northeast somewhere. Um, beautiful yarn and it's knitting up so lovely. Um, Andrea Mowry's framed sweater. Now she designed this for spin cycle. So it is, hers has a color changing. Um, but don't really need that. Uh, I, you could do it in solids. And I, as you can see, I did it in that like pretty speckle. Um, and Laura, I, um, keep finding like 
intense. Look at that in the ball. That's so fibers, uh, like like wood chips and stuff. Uh, so I feel like the the dye method with this was super similar to like the natural dyeing with like the long wood and stuff that we do at the uh, retreats uh, where there would be like, like wood, yeah. different colored like wood chips and stuff that I'm finding in these like darker speckle areas. Um, so, so it, yeah, it, it made me think, I probably wouldn't have thought that if we didn't see that in person at the knitting and natural dyeing retreats that we posted before, but it feels like, um, they're the natural fibers that she's using to dye with are like wood chips and stuff that are like infusing the color of that into the yarn. It's really cool. It's a little scary, uh, because you're knitting away and then you're like, oh shit, let me just pull that sliver out of my finger. Uh, cause that I'm is intense. I'm, I'm like not lucky. I'm just like lucky yeah. to tennis or whatever and like knitting away. Well, and then I have a splinter. <laughs> that takes me to Brooklyn tweed time, you know, where it's very like barnyard and yeah. And you just sometimes yeah, you're like, okay, you're there's a burr in here. Yeah. Yes, totally. Just like, holy shit. Yeah. It's intense. Well, at least, you That's know, intense. it's organic, all part of it. Yeah. Very, very organic. Um, but yeah, love it this. though. Uh, so worth it. I'm hoping, um, I'm, my goal is to get to the underarms, um, before my next class we're doing that. I'm doing this as a knit along. Um, so the next class we're putting in steak panels. Um, so I'm going to get to the underarm and that is, let's see, it's one, two. So I'm almost there. I need to finish a re this repeat. This is a repeat. I need to finish this repeat and do three more rows. So I'm almost there. And then I get to wow. put this uh, to the side. That is impressive, though. Dang. Dang. Yeah. Uh, a wow. time. Yeah. Yeah. Not a knitting time. Uh, um, anything else you're working sure. on? Well, for this weekend, I will be continuing on with my Louise cardigan. We're having such fun teaching that class. So we have separated for sleeves. I would like to get some uh, some of the body going because we're going to be talking sleeves in this upcoming class. So I'd like to have some body, more substantial amount of body before we start picking up for sleeves. So that's a little goal I have um, where I can't, you know, where I got to put the Orla down for just a little while do some work knitting. Um, but then of course, uh, just before we hopped on this live, we uh, announced our latest knit along, uh, the emotional support weird. chicken cock along. Oh, right. Cock along. So weird. Yay. So weird. We discovered that it looks like little dwarf beards um, in the, in the making, but it's, uh, this is also coming together way too fast. So I have a feeling um, this will be completed pretty quickly because it's so fascinating. Yeah. I'm it's, excited uh, about that too. Here's my second right? one. Fascinating yeah. stuff. Very fun. So yeah, very fun. that's, that, yeah, there's, and there's plenty more, but like, this is what I've been working on this week. So I think that's a fair rundown. Uh, I think so too. So I, I, uh, I mentioned this, um, last time, but I joined the mystery stitch along for Satsuma street um uh, uh monster house and this part was part one and this part just came out on thursday this was part two and i finished that up um and look how cute it is it's i i really can't believe it and we were talking about this um at our hang recently where she just Something about Satsuma Street and Halloween, like her sense of color goes so well with Halloween designs. I just love it. It's so fun. It's so fun. And I'm going to sneak peek this and actually I'm just going to say it to hold myself accountable, but the white on this is glow in the dark floss. No kidding. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. And wow. last night I, I tested it and I filmed a reel about it. Did you? So oh, I'm yay, gonna make content. a reel. I'm gonna make content um, where uh, I test the glow in the darkness of my white, uh, my white thread. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for that. Wow! Incredible. 
<laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's uh, very, it's very fun. I, and it's nice, you know, sometimes to do other things, take a break from the this and do yes. this. Exactly. Speaking of other things, that is a goal I have for today. I, we have been working on a sleepwear so along in yep. the garment workroom and I've had my Fran pajamas hanging out behind me for the past week and I'm so close to finishing the top and I want to cut out the bottoms today. So that'll be a uh, different activity, uh, get, you know, rest yeah. the forearms a little bit and work yeah. on the posture. So yeah, yeah. things going on. I think that's great. Um, I also, um, what else? Oh, so Vast Fest. Yeah. Uh, last night, uh, we, I had my black sheet black sweater yes. class where we calculated our circumferences and planned mm -hmm. out the bodies of a black sheet sweater. I'm making a black sheet vest. Um, so I got a great start on it. Just kidding. Oh, I don't have yeah. a great start on it. I wound it's my yarn. Perfect. I yes. wound my yarn. Um, but I need to cast that on. So that is a goal. That's a goal of mine. Yes. Uh, a, an Olympic dream that I have where I'm going <laughs> to get to the body of, the, I'm yes. going to get done with the body of this. And then I'm going to cast on the body of my, uh, my black sheep sweater vest uh it's and get to the body of that too i feel Even like there's too much uh too, too much to do too much to do yes. i too i am feeling that, as well. Yeah. feeling that as well yeah too much to do but you know uh this is what separates the olympians uh from the hobbyists uh and we just gotta be in olympian mode uh, Laura, and I'm, I'm going to get there. I got a lot of shit to do. I'm going to do it. There is, it's just, it is only August 1st today. So much time left, uh, before so even nice. before fall rolls in, which is our prime season. Yes. So there's plenty of time, plenty of time. So much time, so much time. Um, all right. Uh, we did, uh, last week or two weeks ago, some, at some point we had a teaser um for that half beard little fuckhead yes yes um is is are we gonna talk about that little yes. half beard asshole we had talked about that in our party olympics segment but at this point <gasps> oh, um yes. so we were gonna revisit it on our next party olympics segment but at this oh, point that's we what it was. can treat these folks to more olympic hot takes or we can save it it's i mean there's further development so who can you know depends on there will to continue it to be more uh, 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 uh more developments i'm sure because he's yes. gonna start he's gonna start track and field going. starts very soon yeah yes yeah i say let's dig into it i say let's dig into it and then um you know because it's all olympics all the time i feel like people should be people have been warned you know sounds good um, well this backstory this grudge goes back to um iceland i believe not germany right but back to our trip to iceland it was iceland yes yes we were watching norwegian television you have your your options of like one bbc channel a norwegian channel a swedish channel a german channel um and on the uh, norwegian channel they were covering the euro european qualifiers the last big track and field competition before the olympics um and we were they were covering all the norwegian athletes um and then some highlights from other folks and the the big to do was this high jumper from Italy, whose name I couldn't tell you, but his brand is all about having half of the side of his face shaved and having a beard on the other half of his face. And so all of his social media is half beard, half beard. in English. Yes. Yeah. And he had all of these, like all of his supporters were wearing these t-shirts that were just the half beard, like the silhouette of his, of his half beard. Um, so that is very much his brand. Now, to be clear, we have no problem with anyone who wants to do anything they want to with their hair. That is not the, the 
focus. And far be it for us to tell people not to brand things. That is a no. big part of our business strategy. Our Absolutely. face is on our brand. Fair enough. Yes. Um, the pr- issue was this gentleman was so obnoxious from the moment he stepped onto the track. And because this was like the Norwegian, uh, like, broadcast it wasn't the italian broadcast it was the norwegian broadcast and i think there were like two little norwegian boys who were competing with (laughs) this italian for the high jump placement um and something like this and the and those you know those boys were just very norwegian uh just like patiently waiting their turn uh while this half beard gentleman was dancing all over the place um uh, like get, making sure that the crowd was like hyping him up like jumping into point, the crowd yes at one point he had failed his high jump like once and he gets like a second time and then he made it over the second time he runs to the middle of the track and starts limping and we're like, yes. and they're like, oh, Every is he hurt? One was like, is he oh, hurt? Oh my God. And then oh my God, he he's sits hurt. down. Freaking out. And he right? sits down on the track and removes a shoe and dumps his shoe. And he has little stupid springs in his shoe. Like he's got springs in his shoe because he's such a good high jumper. And his little group is like, Wah! And uh, that's when was the so, Norwegian and, broadcasting team lost their shit. They were just like, and you know, our Norwegian's not great, but it was very like, ugh. and then you like, cut to the Norwegian boys and they're like, how long is this going to take? Because we all have to do our run still. And then the, their little crowd's like, Rah! and this is your fiance. Stunning. Uh, wife. Lady. wife, Laura. Okay, right. Sorry. That's his wife. wife. Yeah. Wife. Um, Which is fresh wife. At the time, New he wife. did not have this backstory. Yes. He just Dare like, I say ran into the first crowd. wife. Yeah, we thought girlfriend yeah. at the Sorry, time. Honey. We, we, thought girlfriend we thought girlfriend because of the way that he was like such a dick. Yeah. Who would possibly be like me? That's my dick. Thank you. I'm bu- I'm signing up for this, right? Uh, some girl who wanted a trip to wherever they were. She right? but has no. tennis wife energy. I think she'd be much happier in that life. But instead, yes. here she is oh with half beard. The way that half beard like bolted himself into the crowd and picked up this woman and like mauled her. It was, I mean. It was you Tom assume Cook a certain level of energy. something. Yes, for like Italians, but this was just like so extra. Right. You were like, "Oh, honey, oh, honey." Um. So whatever. This guy won. He sucks. We stalked him on the internet and uh, made fun of him for the rest of the night. And then I kind of forgot that he existed, Laura. Well, until I saw the Italian uh, committee boating down the Seine. And I was like, huh, I bet half beard's in there. I was looking around, looking around. I'm not seeing half beard or maybe he's shaved. And I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. Maybe he's not there. Or he like got it together and was like, this is the Olympics. I'm going to stop being such a ding dong. Um, Turns out he was the goddamn flag bearer, the male flag bearer for team Italy. And then this whole thing comes out the next day which yeah um, so i saw i was scrolling instagram um i was scrolling instagram and like espn was like oh my god this poor italian boy uh accidentally flung his wedding ring into the sun but he just had the most lovely response and i was like oh oh my god it's that's half beard and he's totally doing that as a publicity stunt because that's his entire shit 
Um, and so then he got to like do this whole interview with ESPN about how much he loves his wife and how maybe she can drop her wedding ring into the Sen too so they can be together forever in, in Paris. Because it's and a, what like, better way, what better way for their love to be immortalized and for their ring to be in the city of love for eternity. And people are sharing it on social media like, because of course they are, because it was entirely like, orchestrated by the spring. Anybody who who is in an actual competition with other professional, like professional acting athletes, who stages tiny springs to be put into their shoe so they can do an entire like song and dance about being her and then dumping springs out of his shoes does not accidentally drop his wedding ring into the sin not happening it's just it's just a lot i i can see how it could be a thrill if you know him or whatever we're not necessarily i'm not italian so i know that we have to grade on italian culture as well but it's just like basic it's yeah, a lot. basic sportsmanship it's just gross and this is coming from an american and we are i mean like bald eagle asshole like you yeah. yeah. say yeah. yeah we got snoop yeah. dog yeah. running you know running the uh torch that's questionable we lady gaga singing shit. in french it's a it's oh, questionable yeah but all right uh, beyonce will but, show up at some point just get ready yeah, for it 100 yeah. percent. but uh so all the uh, this is you know glass houses for sure but like from just a basic sportsman level, I'm just like, not about it. Not, not this guy. Not this guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely not. Um, yeah. This is so, your nightmare uh, boyfriend. I'm just saying this man is yes. your nightmare boyfriend, whether or not you're actually married to him. This is my nightmare as a partner. Just, woof. no, thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it is so ridiculous. Like, the way that he thought of this too you can just see his little brain working where he's like oh if i shave i want to shave by the face the side that i high jump over so that i can skim the high jump right and then he's just like oh i know then i'll get all of my friends to do it and then i'll do branding and then i'll and you can just see his little brain uh moving and, and then and then that's just, 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 just rubbing us the wrong way so that it's is definitely. something to look out for when definitely. we start hitting the uh the track and field events in the next coming days all right uh yeah so keep an eye out for that guy Gianmarco Tom Gianmarco Tambieri yeah 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 pass fart noise is right next fart noise is right no you're Skit. all gonna laugh about that when you see it yeah Skit. um uh, all right anything else really is anything else going on well I do have a little show and tell um so we can put it th this in the culture section as well um culture but yes culture it uh was my birthday this past weekend and i went to southwest michigan which is an exotic locale for this group we none of us have ever been there um just kidding that is where our retreats are hosted and uh it was fun to go during the on season the season that most people are there not knitting and outside it was very interesting to go um but while i was there uh i went antiquing with some members of Brooke's family, which I have never been antiquing, but it turns out antiquing is just thrifting, but way overpriced. So that is a that is something that I learned. Um, you just like ups charge vintage for, for thrift, thrifted items. Um, so it was fun to poke around. And of course, um, nobody understands anything about the world that we live in. So I did find some very reasonable patterns related to crafting. So I found this um that i just loved this vintage pattern book from red heart called knit for defense and it has these knits for every branch of the military look at this little sailor man with the boat neck there is a dicky um for uh diving for chest protection look at the official gloves the military gloves you are and gonna beat some nazis in that dicky for sure i sure am you know we are in it's related to the olympics to me because we're in the two weeks of the year where i'm like ah, america and yeah. i was just like oh hell i mean look at this scuba With diving a yeah scuba oh diver ahoy for the airmen 
Um, so it's obviously the writing is atrocious. Like add a pair of war mittens and you know he'll be comfortable. And then you're like, oh, 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 oh. But I mean, look, it's me. Look, it's me with my lucky oh strike my um, and my yes. cap. So America. this this was two American dollars. So I'm very excited about knitting for defense. Um, for that defense. had to that had to come that had to come home with me. Um, marksman's gloves. So this is great. Loved this. And then I found oh this pre-cut simplicity pattern for this little jumper and blouse situation um, for $1. So I just loved this. And Cute. thought, yep, yep. It's art. It's pre-cut, but I'm like, who cares? I can just trace it out on tracing, tracing paper and have a good old time. Um, I thought it was pants, but it's a skirt. And I think that's even more cool um, with a giant bone Cute. in the back. So yes. I just want to be this girl. So why the hell not? Uh, so that was what my good antiquing. antiquing. Thank uh, you. Yeah, what good antiquing? You did yes. it. And then I found this, this little Southwestern pot made by a member of the Dakota Nation, but it's so old, it still says Sioux on it, which is, mm, they prefer Dakota or Lakota, depending on their language. But uh, this was also very reasonable, and I have a little collection of these. So that is my show and tell from my antiquing. Wow. Yes. Wow. Um, guys yeah, like antiquing that. in uh, the Midwest is still a lot different than antiquing on the East Coast. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah. And I am reminded of that. I was reminded of that recently because do you remember um, in Gilmore Girls, um, Lane uh, and Mrs. Kim have that antique store. Yes. And whenever anybody go, it goes in there, she's like, $1,000 uh, for this doorknob. And you're like, yes. Yikes, you people. Big crazy, yikes. crazy. Yeah. Big yikes. Big yikes. Yeah. 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 So. Rough. Rough. It was so fascinating. So I guess I'm an antiquer now. Look at me. <laughs> uh, well, you cannot antique unless you are 40, Laura. So you are doing it right. I've done it. Yep. Yeah. They said, Otherwise, they would have kicked you out. That's yeah. what they said. They said, welcome home. And yeah. I had a grand old time. So uh, there was also a ton of the very, the ice cream helmets that, uh, that come to you at baseball games, like whole stacks of them. And I was like, well, God damn it. Uh, but not the that's point. I, you got to go that's and cheating. get it yourself. Yeah. Yep, I was just like, cheating. they're all here. Uh, but no, you got to get them yourself. You got to go to St. Louis uh, and you got to go in the arch and then acquire it yourself. Those are the rules. You got to earn, earn your helmet. You got to earn your helmet. Otherwise, <laughs> what are we <laughs> even doing? Right. Exactly. Um, thank you uh, for the birthday wishes, Lisa. I appreciate it. And I'm glad we're friends again after our Bob Costas disagreement. Um, yeah. So that's, that, that was the big thing I brought back. That's it. That's really all I've got. I, I think this is enough. Isn't this enough? We, we've given I you all so much enough. content. Yeah. So much I think content. this is enough. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and just to remind everyone, we are going to be doing this every week for the whole right. month. Uh, we've right. been taking a You're lot welcome. of time off. For various yep. reasons, but now we're back. August, we're settling in. All right. Um, and if you cannot get enough of us, uh, we're basically live every day with various things happening. Yes. Uh, chickens, Olympics. Uh, so check your sketch in the old party. Otherwise, if you're watching us on YouTube, or people like to tell me screen to show me screenshots of us Laura, that they get on to their watch television. On their TV, yes. uh, which feels great. Uh, that yes. feels great. I like that. Like our forty-five people who watch us on YouTube um, are watching us on the big screen. That feels real. Yeah, it that does. Feels real. It's a further motivation to clean this up, uh, clean this crap room up a little bit more. But uh, that's not gonna happen this month. So <laughs> no, uh, too much. We're just adding. We're just adding yes. to the piles at this point. What are you gonna I do? Know. Yep. I'm gonna have to put a non-suitable for work uh, tag on this because I just have this naked lady just. I know. Right here. Yeah. How embarrassing. Hubba, hubba. How embarrassing. We'll get yeah. demonetized. Uh -huh. 
<sighs> every time, every time. Um, all right. Well, I say we call it a day, Laura. I think we yeah, did this Yeah, let's go thing. watch the Olympics. Uh, yeah. Let's go watch the Olympics. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today live or watching us from your giant televisions uh, in your living rooms. All right. We will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all.